G'day guys, I'm Ross. I'm building a 40 foot catamaran from foam core composite materials out of a mould I purchased a few years ago. Now right now I'm working down in the starboard side of the boat over here. I'm actually installing conduits so that I can run water lines and power and sanitation through the under section of my boat. Pretty, uh, pretty important stuff in a boat and, and right now getting that sole down is, is pretty much my absolute priority so that I can continue to glass and tab and fill it in that main forward bulkhead. And, uh, and I hope you enjoy it. So don't forget to give it a like, don't forget to subscribe and certainly make a comment. I'd love to hear from you guys, especially now we're all locked down. We wanna be chatting to each other and making sure that we get that get that communication out there. And let's let's have a chat, you know, for God's sake, we all need to chat more. The uh, important thing right now as well is that you jump over to the Composite Shop channel as well. That's my second channel. I've been working hard on that filming the process of building a mega composite surf kayak. It's a carbon fiber reinforced product. So it's one that uh, basically I'm finishing to a marketable product. I think it's a good, pretty good uh, way to show you how I build these, these kayaks. And I hope you enjoy that as well. And subscribe to that. You've got to subscribe or you're not going to get the next stage. Um, alternatively, our patron site, get over there. Uh, the, the issues are up early. They're up three months early on that site. But for now, let's get busy because I've got a lot to do. And while we're in lockdown, I'm in the ultimate isolation here. So I'm in the mold. No one wants to come and help me work, but that's the way it is here on the hulls. Thanks guys, look after yourself please, stay safe and healthy and let's get in some work. Right, hey, so I'm all set up in the bow. I've basically got a lot of tabbing to do. You can see here I've actually laid out my cloth um, and I've actually pleated around where these drain holes are here and over here. Um, but these are individual compounds. These are, these are going to be quite a challenge because I'm sitting on about a 45 degree angle here because this is where the bridge deck rises up and uh, goes up to the bow. You can see here I'm basically got all my cloth here. Uh, it's about two in the afternoon. I anticipate getting on about three of these done, the Sabo. But uh, man, it's so humid, it's not funny. And uh, you know, it's probably about 75% humidity and, and it's going up as the day goes on. So I just went home and mowed my lawn because it was about a foot high and uh, hadn't mowed it for two weeks. And you know, after the floods last week, it, uh, yeah, it took some effort three times at the mow the stinker. But uh, I've just come up here. I want to get this done today and tomorrow morning so that I can put it to bed. The front face is done. It's as solid as a rock. Honestly, you can run a bloody battleship into this thing and it will never come loose. I'm pretty proud of my efforts here, to be honest. The tabbing is just going on perfectly. So I'm going to get into it now, mix up some vinyl, and I'm going to do one compartment at a time, make sure I get it perfect so I have minimal sanding, minimal work to do, and then I'm going to be able to come in and uh, ultimately flow coat these chambers because they're effectively done. Okay, so I'm down here, I'm basically already seeing that this, this is absolutely perfect. I mean, look, gloved hand, not even a little burr here. Very important to get this, uh, this laminated down properly without any uh, chance of any air bubbles. Uh, for the inspection, it needs to be absolutely perfect, and it will be perfect. Um, essentially, I've got a, a um, 100 mil either side, uh, and then 150 mil either side for the second layer, and that gives me that overlapping tabbing that we're, we're seeking all the time, plus the strength of this half inch radius fillet is going to increase the strength uh, tenfold of this bulkhead. Now, another very important thing to note, I'm working here, uh, it's around 30 hours since I laid this fillet, so I'm still well within the chemistry. I have up to 48 hours to act upon this to maintain a chemical bond. It doesn't have to be wet on wet, but it will still have a chemical reaction rather than a mechanical reaction, and that's why I'm in here hitting it now. Watch the colour change here. This is how you know vinyl set off. You actually go to green very quickly. Well, you just can't sugarcoat this part of the build. It's, uh, it's it's often a bit tedious, bloody uncomfortable. I thought it'd be good to be sitting on my backside doing some tabbing, but that actually led to a lot of problems. I'm actually sitting on about a 45 degree or 35 degree slope here, so pretty uncomfortable and squat down for uh, you know probably a good day there, just trying to get all this tabbing in place. But you know, there's no way to avoid doing it, and there's no easy way to do it. Simply, it's a brush and a fin roller, and uh, and ultimately peel ply, which lessens the work later on. Very important to lessen the work later on. Bit of a tight little spot this one. It's been a bit of a challenge.
Yes, indeed. It's a bit like painting a picket fence. You need to do every single surface, and uh, and you cannot underestimate the amount of work that's involved in uh, in in tabbing in a section where you've got multiple bulkheads and and uh, wing frames like I had here, up, down, and across, and uh, ensuring they are all double overlapped. You'll notice me also cutting the the cloth in the corners so that I can actually get it to pleat into the corners. A simple cut straight up the centre for about the length of uh, of, of the corner itself will allow you to fold that over so in those corners you're actually effectively getting around eight layers of tabbing which is further strengthening the uh, the result So I've just finished the uh, the anchor well here. Gonna let that go off. And about four hours ago, I did uh, this compartment here, and I've just ripped the peel ply off to reveal absolutely perfect tabbing. I mean, there's not even a bump on there. Very, very light sand around the margins here where you always get a little bit of threads hanging out. But I mean, you cannot imagine how smooth this is. And, uh, and in this first compartment as well. So, you know, pretty successful tabbing session there even around my uh, my drains are uh, it's now tabbed into the drain so I'm further reinforcing those drains and uh, and you know my tabbing up to here perfectly wetted out and uh, pretty resin light to be honest um, and and that's another good reason to use peel ply it tends to be able to squeegee out a lot of that uh, a lot of that excess resin but there's absolutely no brittleness in there these chambers are now totally sealed and and mate talk about strong I mean it doesn't get any stronger than that now I'm not sure what I'm going to do in this area here this um, anchor well that is 30 mil of foam with about uh, six or eight layers of glass at three on the outside five underneath I'm very well considering another layer of foam core uh, laid up glued in here with epoxy just to give it an extra bit of reinforcing and a bit of sound deadening because uh, when that anchor's coming up bang 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 uh, another option is a uh, nylon like like um, UHMW um, polyethylene sort of floor chopping board sort of nylon big thick piece maybe an inch thick not really sure what to do here I'm going to get some advice I don't want any carpet rubber or anything in there because it's just going to catch mold and that's what those uh, drains are for but yeah lots to do now I'm pretty much all um, pretty happy here the windlass is going to sit in here uh, but yeah we're looking at these um, completed tabbing regions pretty much this this whole bulkhead's uh, almost done right along So this area is now totally complete, basically all of my tabbing, everything's in place. Uh, I'm just going to rip the peel ply off because I'm going to come in here and give this a good sand at some stage in the next couple of months. But uh, just to make sure that I've got no bubbles, any voids or anything, I'm going to rip the peel ply off and then I'll be able to come back and just inspect it a bit more closely because I don't intend to finish this off anytime soon, but having it done like this is so good. So. There's a couple of little areas around the drain holes here that are a little bit sharp. They're going to need a little bit of cleaning up. But for the most part, it's a pretty neat job. And uh, all of my anchor well and everything is uh, chain locker. And then uh, down in these smaller areas here are all complete as well. So yeah, nice little tidy up in here. It's pretty much done, ready for flow coat this area here. Breathe. That's 
absolutely burn it. Oh. He's bleeding. Ouch. Shitting myself on the bulkhead over here. So a couple of weeks ago, Dave and Jackie, my sister-in-law and brother-in-law from the UK, arrived, uh, in fact, two days before they closed the Australian border and everything started going a little bit crazy. And Dave's uh, been following the progress and we discuss this regularly, uh, weekly on FaceTime as to where I'm at with the progress. And uh, it was good for them to finally actually walk on the physical hull and see the behemoth that is my project. Um, just explaining it all, to uh, someone who's seen it on a video before. I, I think it does, it does actually put it into perspective the size of the task that I've taken on here. Uh, it was really good to have the guys here. You know, they've basically been staying with us for the last couple of weeks. In fact, while all the lockdowns have happened and uh, it had has added quite a bit of uncertainty as to how they're going to get home. And for now, we're, uh, we're sort of planning to get away for the weekend before everything goes uh, crazy and we headed up to the Blue Mountains to uh, my family and my old uh, my old home. We were able to catch up with family before everything started to go a little bit crazy. Come back up to my hometown. I'm here with my sis, Nisi. We've got Hazza playing the Russian drum down there. Just sensational. We've got Dave, my sister-in-law Jackie, Janet, Jimmy, and Dave up here on Hassan's Wall. So this is my old stomping ground up here. Beautiful. Never seen it so green in all my life. It's just amazing, isn't it, Nisi? That is unbelievable. Unbelievably green. I mean, this is the drought's broken here, as far as we're concerned. Never seen it like this. We're going to go out for a bit of social isolation. We've got Dave and Jackie here, stuck here from England, and uh, Janet, and seven of us in the house, socially isolating, aren't we, guys? Yep. So we're going to go out paddling. That's our way of, of dealing with it. <laughs> Check out Bonnie and Sam came down to visit. They're never allowed to home now. Once they go, we never see them again, so they've got to stay here. It's my way of keeping my kids here with me, is lock them down. <laughs> Sorry, oh, sorry. Sorry, Dave just said he needs to get his leg over. I think that's uh, yeah, yeah, don't we all? <laughs> yeah, Jackie said it. Dave, just give me a second. Dave, I'll give you a hand. I actually want to film, but I want to help you. But I'd rather watch. <laughs> I, I'd rather film, try to get Dave, try to get on this, than help him. To be honest, because it's going to be quite funny. Don't help him. Let him do it on his own. I'm trying to film it. We're vlogging, Von. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Forever the kayak guy, Janet, helping Dave get on. Just fall onto it, Dave. Stick your ass in it. Stick your ass in it. That's the. Oh, he's on. That's right. You're right. That's it. That's how you remember how you paddle. Come on. No, it's been nine years, so give it another crack. Have a look at the water. How clear it is. 